those vegan guys. Oh, thank you. Oh. Hi, Lauren. Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, just have to say, so it's on record. Uh, do you understand that I'm recording this uh, chat and that it will be uploaded to YouTube as a vlog? Yes. And are you happy with that? Yes, that's fine. Fantastic. And have you washed your minge? Oh, I have, yes. <laughs> I gave it a good buff. <laughs> so, everybody, this is uh, Lauren. You'll know Lauren anyway. Uh, from she's one of our moderators when we do a live chat as a hedge rider mm -hmm. and she also has a fabulous channel brain girl which i'll link up there uh, and she does um she does lots and lots of gardening lives in the a most beautiful rural part of ireland um so where is it exactly you live lauren um i live in county down is that north um, well, it's Northern Ireland, yeah, but it's like on the on the east part of Northern Ireland, right? Um, near the mountains. So I'm quite close to the border, south. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so tell us about your vegan journey. I mean, you've got you've got another story, haven't you, about your um, about your uh, traumatic brain injury. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of linked in a way as well. Well, have you got that already in a vlog on your channel? Yeah, it's like my right. origin story. Yeah. Send me, send me the link when we've done this chat, and I will put it up there now. Okay. Right. Lovely. <laughs> so, if anyone's interested in, it is a very interesting story in in uh, in what happened to Lauren a few years ago and the fact that she's now kind of in recovery. So do check out that video uh, on her on her channel. Um, but yeah, tell us about your vegan journey, Lauren. Well, being the old lady that I am, I've, <laughs> I've been, well, I've been meat free for about 25 years. And the last sort of four or five of those have been vegan. Um, I did try veganism briefly in the 90s when I was a teenager um, but it was it lasted about a year and there was a lot of reasons for that I wasn't really making the connection when I did it um, it was like really hard <laughs> really hard to do I mean I remember I used to go to eighth day a lot obviously oh, yeah. I'm from Manchester um, to get specialist vegan stuff but there still wasn't that much choice um, and I think back then I was just a lazy teenager and like I kind of did it and then went off went back to veggie and then four or five years ago um, about two three years after my accident now I'm gonna get a bit like metaphysical here let's get metaphysical <laughs> um, I kind of I've had a slow some people would say an awakening process, but that's a bit wanky. I've had like a bit of like. I don't. I don't think words like that are wanky. Do you not think no. so? Because no, <laughs> I think that I think that kind of I think that gammons have tried to make us believe that words like that are yeah. so flaky and twee and blah blah blah. But having an awakening is having an awakening. What better way to say it? Yeah, because I, I just think things like that get overused a lot, you know, people say woke and things like that, and it makes it a bit cringy. But I mean, that's the only way that I can describe it. I kind of, um, I've, I've been through a process of like post traumatic growth. And part of that growth was like, I just woke up one morning, and I, I went to my partner and I said, I can't do this anymore. It was just like, something triggered inside me and I said I'm vegetarian it's not enough I can't keep inflicting harm anymore I don't want to do it and that was it bang vegan and how long ago was that about four that years was, um, I'm in my fifth year now all right mm -hmm. brilliant so is your partner vegan as well Lauren? yes he is he is because he was veggie anyway when we got together so we were both vegetarian right and I went vegan and he kind of followed because it was like, well, it's just easier. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, like cooking, cooking, we'll be eating the same things. And um, he's a lot quieter than me. He's a lot less vocal than me. 
um like i'm quite i suppose um yeah vocal about what my reasons for doing it whereas he's he knows why he's doing it but he doesn't express it as much i, I keep hearing about all these stories about people's partners who've joined them on their <laughs> journey and i feel really bad because i literally came home and said we are going vegan well, literally yeah to be honest i think i may have got to that point with him i mean he was vegetarian but i have said to him a few times since i don't know actually how i would cope if you weren't vegan because it would disgust me <laughs> that sounds awful i mean especially if he like he was a meat eater i mean he wants to kiss a meaty mouth you know like mm. totally get it no i totally get <laughs> um, it though it would just hurt me inside too much to be with someone that doesn't have at least that basic sort of ethical alignment yeah yeah so what was it anything in particular was it like it, it, it so it, it was just a what triggered that awakening in you do you think do you know was what it... paul i have no idea it was just one day i was stood in my kitchen and i went i can't do this anymore it was almost like a great it's something i think that was gradually kicking in over the years since my accident and then it hit the vegan the vegan button <laughs> and i just went i can't do this anymore. and I, I remember getting quite emotional about it. it was a very emotional thing for me and just going i can't do this anymore i'm not yeah, contributing yeah. to this anymore that's it i'm done so were you already living in ireland when you went vegan yes yes i was yeah i've been here um just over seven years which is i'd like i'd literally been here a month when i had my accident right so, oh wow yeah. god yeah so please guys do check out lauren's uh channel and especially the little gardening videos and stuff she does just so you can see where she lives because it's it's beautiful it's um i i imagine I mean, are you quite far from stores, shops and things? Um, well, we're kind, kind of lucky because we're, we look like we're in the middle of nowhere, but we've got like a little um, town, like 10 minutes drive oh, away. Nice one. And we do have a couple of petrol stations and a, with a spa in. But, All right. Um, but we don't really use those. We just go to like the supermarket mainly and so get our veg from our local greengrocer. <laughs> What uh, what supermarket do you use most frequently? Um, well, it used to be Sainsbury's. Um, I used to get deliveries, um, but we've changed to Asda now because that's close. But every now and then I'll I'll go. Oh, let's treat ourselves and I'll put it in a Sainsbury's order because <laughs> they are, in my opinion, um, great for vegan stuff. I absolutely agree. We've just been to um, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, and you, why would you know? I'm I'm 30 minutes late making this call to Lauren because Jason and I have been to Sainsbury's this morning and it's it's it is the really sad part Lauren I'm no longer enjoying shopping oh no I'm blind <laughs> well, that's I, all right. <laughs> I'm actually no longer enjoying it at all because I've got my scan and shop app on my mm -hmm. phone and I've got this system whereby I sanitise my hands before I go in. The trolley's already been sanitised. I've got my mask and I now have a proper one. I go in, I, I've, so I've got my list and my scan shopper. So I'm flicking between the two, scanning, da 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 da. Come out, load it into the car, sanitise my hands again, get home, put the shopping away, then wash my hands, then get changed, then wash <laughs> my hands again because I've touched the clothes that have been outside. It's like, and I keep thinking to myself, is this overkill? And am I doing overkill? And I, I think maybe part, partly I am, but I'd be terrified of yes. having something on my clothes. And yes. I have a tendency to always be touching my clothes. Yeah, yeah. And I touch my face a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I'm just thinking that in the current situation, like you're doing, like. A lot of us, I mean, not me, because I've already been through it. So, like, this doesn't, it's not scaring me at all. But I can understand that a lot of people are now feeling like they're out of control. So if you can insert, assert some control over what's going on by being a bit clean, then that's fine. As long as, like, when it's over, it doesn't become 
like a almost like a compulsive behavior yeah well that's the that's the thing and i think mm. some of the way i'm being at the moment is uh because we do have a shared um experience in that we both went through a trauma mm -hmm. uh, yours was a, a, a complete freak accident mine was an armed robbery um and for those of you that don't know the details of that i'll whack the video up there as well uh, just because I, but I, I think this is the remnants of hypervigilance yes definitely which i had for a long time after i, I still do to yeah, some of extent course you will. yeah yeah i yeah. still cross the road if there's a group of mm. people you know i'm still very very cautious on a buzz i'm very cautious if my back is vulnerable yes yeah, that's understandable. That's yeah, it's, it's a post-traumatic stress response to you having a very normal, natural reaction to a really massive outlying event in your life. And the way that we as humans deal with it is like we try to exert control back because we've yeah. lost it. The rug was pulled from under us. We've lost that that feeling of like, I'm in charge of this. And it's a massive Weird, learning curve. I had to really learn to be OK with like uncertainty yeah so that's normal <laughs> i don't know whether anybody will be able to see them but you've got some gorgeous old no I, i'm actually oh, looking for my tattoos pictures. sorry <laughs> it shows them in a minute i want to know about them but these pictures here that you've got on the side of the mirror they all oh, look, yeah they all look quite vintage these these were just these these are like my archetype magic pictures ah. these are people i use for different archetypes so they're just printed off the computer right some post like um, occult looking postcards from we've got um a pair of friends that are really good like artists who draw really like occulty um strange artwork that gets used on album covers and stuff and so wow. some of their postcards there as well and that one was off a friend that's off a friend of mine as well <laughs> and i love your fabric bunting Oh, that was from our wedding. <laughs> that reminds me of a festival. Yeah, yeah. Very much. Some of the festivals we've been to, which have been very kind of green festivals. So tell us a bit more about your your vegan journey, about what what things maybe did you miss the most at the start? Do you know what? I'm going to be one of those annoying people now, Paul. <laughs> like, nothing nothing really yeah because i don't see the way i'm eating now as lack no I no think it's the mindset i think if you see it as less than then you miss but i don't oh, miss anything absolutely. what i mean though was was there anything particular that you thought oh i'm gonna really miss that and then you ended up veganizing it and it was just as good no no because i did that with i never thought i would get into tofu scramble <laughs> and yeah. i bloody love tofu scramble now like really love it more than i ever loved scrambled eggs <laughs> yeah yeah and i also love my um uh fried egg fried egg butter uh made from tofu uh, yeah, they're, they're delicious. i never thought i'd love yeah. that and i'm like this is way better than an egg ever was I, I, wouldn't, I probably would say the hardest thing to not that I missed it, but the hardest one to break was probably cheese. Because I do think that's addictive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but once I'd kind of... Well, I mean, I think once you make that link, once you know what cheese is, you just don't... You can't... You know, don't want to go there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the process behind it and, and the, the suffering, then you just kind of go, well, it's not worth it. No. Because no. in the nineties we had, I remember there was this the only cheese, the vegan cheese I could get was this circular block. I think it was she's original. Oh, and it was awful. <laughs> yeah, I rem yeah, I remember buying it from Holland and Barrett about seven years ago. <laughs> and it was just like it was like a cheese flavored wet powder block. Oh. It was foul, absolutely foul. But we're spoiled for choice now, aren't we? Oh yeah, definitely, got, yeah. You know, applewood smoked cheese mm. is incredible. I'm not just saying that because they give me free stuff. Although <laughs> I do buy it, they give me free stuff. Uh, but it is a really good cheese. And, uh, you know, all of Sainsbury's range, all of Tesco's range, mm. 
They're all great. I'm glad you mentioned the dairy industry because I think in each of these videos, it's like in the first one uh, with the lovely Laura in Indiana, uh, we it was the egg industry that had been the yeah. pushing point for her. And so we, we briefly talked about the reality of the egg industry. Yesterday uh, with Angie, we talked about having uh, kids who are vegan and having family members who try to intervene that was an important subject and i think just because you've mentioned cheese and the dairy industry it's important for us to talk about that for a minute mm -hmm. so that anyone who's watching this for the first time um knows that i will hold my hand up and i will admit i honestly thought throughout my whole 20 years as a vegetarian, that cows ate grass and made milk from eating grass. Right, well, I mean, you you go further than me because I didn't even think about how they made milk. It was just cows made milk. And that was like a fact of life almost. And I think when I was vegetarian, I kind of patted myself on the back a lot because like, it's like, well, I'm not killing anything. And then when you realise actually yeah. you are, <laughs> even still, even though it's just milk and just cheese. But then yeah. when you think about it logically, mm -hmm. when you kind of get to the, I mean, afterwards, when, when we watched Vegucated and I came home and said, right, that's it, Jason, we're going vegan. And I was like, well, of course it's birth milk. <laughs> yeah. What else could it possibly have been? She has a massive breast hanging from under her. <laughs> but you with don't several do you? <laughs> long nipples. But you don't. You don't think like that. And I think the thing that makes me laugh is that like you'll get grown adults who will go, Ugh, women's breast milk. But then they'll go and drink. I know. Like cow's milk. <laughs> we, we, we are the only species in the world that consumes the birth milk of another species. Yeah. Yeah. into adulthood yeah uh but the only milk you need guys is either from your mama's breast when you're young enough uh or uh, and i know it's really awkward to find the nipples on an almond but <laughs> it does take a little bit of practice give them a tickle and they pop out <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite plant milk lauren um, I must say I'm an oat person, but not oatly. I um, I find oatly quite watery. I have Alp Alpro oat milk. Right. And it's thick and creamy and lovely, and it goes in everything, tea, coffee, cooking, baking, cereal, everything. So it's like one milk does does all. <laughs> I don't think I've tried Alpro um, oat milk. One no. second, my puss, okay. is try my puss is trying to get in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. Come Hi on. guys. <laughs> Have you had a nice time outside, Isis? Isis, say hi to Lauren. She's here, right? Huh? <laughs> she, she said hello. Hi, Isis. Bless her. And now she's going for a nap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just let me pinpoint it briefly. Cows okay. are forcefully made pregnant. Mm -hmm. They carry for nine months, just like a human does. When they give birth, they are separated from their baby, mm -hmm. who is either just killed outright and used for uh, veal, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, or if she's female, she's still separated and she's raised to be a dairy cow like her mama. She'll probably do about three to four years on the cattle line and then she'll get slaughtered. And then let's not forget, well, during that short life, all the stuff that's pumped into them, the antibiotics, all of that kind of stuff as well. Uh, they're Actually, not seen as, as, as beings, they're seen as a product. Yeah, it's, that's one of the things I don't think that gets acknowledged enough by people who, who are still omnivore and not really thinking about the, is the amount of antibiotics and, and um other chemicals yeah. that are pumped into animals which you are then consuming yeah. and it builds up an antibiotic resistance in you so that 
in future life when you really need antibiotics for something they might not work Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a really important and the cow's milk is full of lots of lovely like hormones to make the calf big and then we wonder why like we've got nine-year-olds that are getting periods and developing breasts and yeah, like, yeah. you it's know crazy isn't it it is, milk. it is crazy but we're seen as extremists for yes. talking about it and yes. all we're doing is outlining facts yes it's not like it's not militant extremism, it's, these are facts. Yeah. Well, you know, it's because you're telling people things that they don't really, like, want to hear. They're not, yeah. they're not, they're like, that's going against my, my worldview, so I'm just going to, like, kick against it. So, tell us a bit more about your, your vegan food intake, then. It's like, what's a typical, what's a typical meal for Lauren and, what's your hobby called, by the way? Ian. What's the what's the typical uh, well? What's a, a meal that Lauren and Ian really love and have reasonably regularly? Well, I would say our diet's probably like yours and Jason's. To be honest, we have lots of veggies and um, pulses and stuff, but we also have like you know the processed stuff. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> why not? When you want a burger, you want a burger. You know what I mean. Right. Um, but yeah, like like lentil dal, I love. Um, I make like homemade naans with that, and that's just delicious. Um, I love pizzas. So, um, Lauren, the yeah. question would then come: Are you going to do any recipe videos for your oh, dal geez. and your naan bread? <laughs> well, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I because because I'm quite sort of. I'm a bit of a Luddite, to be honest, and I don't even know why I'm on YouTube, because it causes me no end of trauma. Um, I'm kind of very basic, get my phone out, shoot, upload, <laughs> and anything beyond that, I'm just like... <laughs> so, um, it would be a very long video for a very short recipe. <laughs> well, you know, Miss Moore at Miss Moore's Vegan Kitchen she does recipe videos. No, no, it, it, it's, you know, me and Jason are just like, don't forget, we've got, um, we come from uh, an entertainment and yeah. performance yeah. background. So if we can do an intro and special effects and, you know, blah, 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 and back, background music, brilliant. But some of the videos I enjoy the most on YouTube have none of that, none mm -hmm. of that. They're just someone in their kitchen sharing something that's easy to make, that I go, ooh. Well, the now bread's are like just three ingredients and they take five minutes to make. Like, it's dead easy. And it's like flour, uh, vegan yogurt, plain yogurt, and baking powder, that's it. And then you just make, like, make the dough, split it, and then and then fry it in the, put it in the dry pan, and you get a naan bread. Oh, um, well, I'm gonna try that <laughs> then. I'll try it, but I will say this recipe has been inspired by my lovely friend, Lauren. <laughs> I mean, I think the quantities are like, I mean, I got it off an American. So it's one cup of yogurt, one cup of flour, and then like a teaspoon of baking powder. And that makes like two substantial nans. So if you want more bread, just double it. Well, that's easy enough then, isn't it? Plain yeah. flour or self-raising? Plain flour. Plain. Uh, yeah. Just one sec. Sorry, my puss is at it again. He's off again and I'm chasing his pussy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm back. You should let Look it go so freely. This is on. why I set up near the back door today. When I did yesterday's, I was over in the corner of the kitchen and I left the door open because I just thought, nope, can't be bothered with her at all. In and out, in and out. She's in and out a lot. I don't blame her. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a lovely day as well here. So tell us some more about you because we share, we share, um, uh, a leaning towards the esoteric. Oh yes, I love um, a bit of woo woo. <laughs> and I, I, but you know, it's like um, I, I think I've shown on the channel many times. I have a big ball of crystals here, and I'm I'm what I would call ritualistic in that if every tooth I've ever lost while I've been an adult, I have wrapped in a note thanking the planet for everything it's given to me, 
returning a piece of myself to it and maybe with some um, wishes on there. And I bury it in the garden. I've done that. And people think I'm weird. Before there was the whole thing about um, sky lanterns. Oh, yes. I used to set one off on uh, New Year's Eve with a note attached to it. Yeah. Well, I still, that. sometimes I write a note just on a piece of paper uh, on New Year's Eve. I turn it into a corn and sellotape it and then set fire to it at the bottom and the ash shoots up. Yeah. Into so I've always done things like that. That's magic. Yeah. That's magic. That's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Fundamentals of magic. Well, it was you. It was you actually that when I talked on one of my vlogs about how I, I, there are certain aspects of certain characters in certain films that I love, and I kind of install them into myself. And you said to me, that's basically archetypal magic. Yeah, yeah. You're using archetypes. You're using. Because um, people can do it with anything. You can do it with characters out of books, real people, um, dead people, um, people from films, the music industry people that you know. If they embody a certain thing that you go, I fancy a bit more of that in my life. I'm not I'm not presenting enough of that. You, you, you use them as an archetype and you... you um, I mean, I do a bit of a complicated ritual around it, but basically you kind of in, almost imprinting that, that archetype into yourself. So like things like if you want to be, um, there's, you know, you know, the Jungian archetypes like the chosen one and the uh, the sorcerer and the teacher. And um, you see, you'll see something in someone, maybe someone very knowledgeable and you think, oh, I fancy a bit of that. So you find someone that's that fits the archetype of the teacher and then you use them to work magic until you sort of get it as part of you. <laughs> so do you use a lot of, um, do you use a lot of kind of positive thinking and um, what's that called? What's that called where you... Law of attraction. Law of attraction. No, I don't. You know, it's weird. I got to think about the law of attraction. I'm... I see myself as a realist rather than positive um, because you can't always be positive all the time. Life is not like that. And I think when you sort of roll in and say, well, that shit's happening, but hey, let's be positive about it. It's not realistic. So I'm more of a, um, I am the happiest now that I've ever been in my life, even though I've had all this crap that's happened to me because I accept myself yes whatever i'm feeling so i don't label it good or bad like happy is good and sad is bad they're just happy and sad and they're part of me and i like i love and accept myself regardless and it kind of takes the that all's you do that overwhelm out of everything yeah yeah because then you can see right i'm sad today Never mind, I'm going to go and do this. You know, it's just part of you. It becomes part of your day. Totally get you. I totally mm -hmm. get you. I can be, um, I think Jason, it throws Jason off guard sometimes. Uh, I can be watching something on TV and there can be a certain piece of music and that gets me somewhere and I'm bawling my eyes out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, are you, are you all right? Are you all right? And it's five minutes and it's done with. It's just, yeah. uh, yeah. it's just, and I deal with it. And it's, and I, dare I say I enjoy it? Yeah, I yeah, do. you're allowed to say that, yeah. I, I enjoy my own emotions because I do feel like, like you, I'm very much in control of them. Yeah, well, you're human. I still have shit days where have that I have no control over. Mm -hmm. Well, we all do, don't we? It's about it's about dropping the story around things like a lot. Our tendency as humans is to go, right, I feel sad today. Why do I feel sad? Oh, I feel sad because of this, this and this and this. The idea is to, to, to drop the story and instead of going through that long winded sort of rumination about it, just go, I feel sad. Full stop. That's it. Yeah. You don't need to know why. You don't need to know how. Just stop telling yourself stories. Um, and that's the, that's kind of the stage that I'm at now. 
because I used to be terrible. I used to be full of anxiety and I got post-traumatic stress after my accident. And I was a very, um, I used to run on nervous energy all the time and be, you know, one of those <laughs> people like yeah. that. Now I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. I get you. I feel you. Mm-hmm. So what, what did you say about your, um, did you actually tell us a, a, a meal? Before? Yeah, like things like lentil dal. I love pe- vegan Oh, meat. that's how we got onto a... Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, toefish, chips and peas. Do you make that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just, we use breadcrumbs instead of batter. So we, like, pan fry it with the breadcrumbs. Like, uh, put it in the oven and then finish it off and pan fry it. Do you use nori? Yes, yeah. Ah, so I've, I, I haven't tried it yet. It's, I'm not one for um, shallow or deep frying a lot of things, mm. but I did do some onion rings last week. Um, just made a little batter with plain flour and a bit of soya milk and some salt and or garlic powder and did some really thick onion rings. They were gorgeous. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> I just put about that much oil in the pan, although Bev's told me off. And said, don't fry with extra virgin olive oil. Get another oil, like rapeseed or something. I use rapeseed because it's full so, of omega-3. Yeah, well, apparently. I, I didn't know that extra virgin olive oil was actually quite dangerous when you heat it up. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I, I, yeah, wasn't aware of that. Thank you. So tell us more about your esoteric side. Um, oh, well, what would you like to know? I mean, I, don't, I hope this isn't boring everybody. Like, they're all rolling their eyes at home going, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they can always turn off. If you don't like it, turn off. Oh, get yourself well, another brew and listen. It's, it's something that's been part of me since I was a kid anyway. I've always been into, like, the paranormal and the high strangeness and all that. And then I was a te- I mean, I've talked about this on my channel um, when I talked about seeing a fairy. Um, and then I was a teenager and I got into like witchcraft and magic and it's just something that's always been there but I'm also when when you say that to people they tend to think that you're like up in the clouds and I'm I'm very realistic yeah, you know, yeah. I don't blindly believe everything but I know what works for me and what doesn't so I'm a very practical <laughs> person with it I don't just go, ooh, love and light, everybody, ooh, you know, and go off on, on a rainbow somewhere. So, you know. I think I find it strange that people find it strange. Yes. Because we all know the power of our own minds. Yes. And they are incredibly powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can, when we train them properly, lift ourselves out of dark places, Mm -hmm. make ourselves extremely positive and confident. I'm not saying, like, everybody can do this. It it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, it does, Uh, yeah. But it all starts here, all of it. So so why would we find other stuff that's done here strange? I mean, I, I read a lot and I've been reading about this and it's when the Age of Enlightenment came along and it was that was all very based in rationality and science. All this, I mean, magic and mag- magical belief has been around for a long, long, long time. It was around pre-Christian, Neolithic eras, you know, they were practising magic. And um, then the Age of Enlightenment came along and told us that that's all wrong and we have to be logical and scientific. And from then on, it kind of like, if you believed in that sort of thing, you were just seen as a bit of a kook. (laughs) And yet, and yes, I'm going to say it because it's going to become a blog at some point in the future. And yet religion, the belief in a giant man in the sky who created everything, including coronavirus and cancer in children and starvation and hunger. If you create <laughs> yeah. everything, you, you, you create everything. Uh, and it's fine to sit in a house full of people. One of the written texts of which says, although it wasn't ever adopted by the church, 
Do not worship me in mansions of stone or wood, for I am everywhere. I am in everything. Just for the record. Um, although that's never been adopted by the church, even though in the same handwriting as all the other papers they adopted. Mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll, so it, it bothers me that that this that a belief in mythical creatures and mythical energies and uh, um, ancient energy streams that you can tap into that are kind of earth based and and based on energies and powers exactly the same as the ones that they're talking about over there yes yes and 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 a lot of like christianity was very twisted to sort of become very patriarchal and very um it kind of separated you from the earth it gave you dominion it's, it kind of started saying well you've got dominion over animals and dominion over the planet and that's when i think our problems began because then we started to think we can do what we want yeah yeah but we are when made you go back, image. yeah when you go back to earth-based stuff earth-based magic earth-based spirituality you connect back with the planet black yes. back with animals and it does the planet good because you start to respect it and i think everyone should go back <laughs> go back to that and look because we don't we're not connected with nature anymore people aren't connected which is why they don't care about it they need to connect go back and connect we've not got dominion we are we coexist we are the gatekeepers we are we're here to um to to look after it not to just destroy it and you know people should respect na nature more because when all said and done we all end up as mud yes exactly <laughs> so get your hands dirty and get your feet in mud and you know i i'm 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 just as happy honestly on a chair in my back garden with a lawn that desperately needs <laughs> cutting covered in uh, dandelions absolutely covered at the moment which is the first food for the bees after a long yeah, winter yeah. so you should leave them i'm just as happy there with just dandelions and grass as i am on a beautiful beach in kefalonia and a turquoise blue sea yeah i, I massively love this planet mm. and oh it's beautiful fact, yeah the fact that i'm able to enjoy it and share it and mm. you know Oh, I'm always covered in muck, me. <laughs> I'll go and have a shower and then I'll go out in the garden and I'll be covered again. And like, what was the point of having that shower? I've mucked down my fingernails, all up my face, everything. But it's 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 a, it's happy making, if that makes sense, which is why I studied horticultural therapy, because it's a very therapeutic thing to get your hands in the soil. I mean, it's even been proven that there is actually something in soil that can lift depression so like get your hands in <laughs> well it's full of b12 isn't it yeah well mm, not so much anymore because it's been depleted but yeah ah. yeah and yeah. uh isn't there something about your one of the ways to kind of ground yourself and connect with the planet and i've done it a couple of times in my backyard on the very grass i was just talking about is just having being barefoot yes stood on on green yes. on wood or anything yeah. that's natural and real and hasn't been put there by man. Yeah, yeah. Skin skin contact with, yeah. with with the earth is really good. I mean, I'm one of those nutcases that, like, when I'm out gardening, I talk to all my plants and trees and, oh, you're going to have a good year this year, lovely. All right, okay, let's get lots of apples. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't and think that's nutty at all. They respond to it because I have really good harvests. <laughs> I mean, scientifically, they respond to it. Yes, because they we do. breathe in, we breathe in yeah. the mix of air we've got here, and we breathe out carbon dioxide, and that's what mm -hmm. they thrive on. Yep, don't they? And they yep. take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So it's mm -hmm. a symbiotic relationship yep. with the green of the earth, which is why vegans are always complaining about the Amazon rainforest being cut down for grazing land. Yep, and let's remember most of it. I'm not speaking to you, Lauren, you already know. <laughs> Most of it is being cut down for grazing land. Yes. Yes. Just like most of the soy grown on earth is grown for cattle. For cattle, yes, exactly. But you know, hey, facts, man. Don't don't blind people with like actual facts. You're telling me things, things, man. I don't want to know. <laughs> 
you know, oh no, no, we can't have facts in the equation. <laughs> so can you see yourself, Lauren, ever not being a vegan? No. No. They would have to drag me to my grave, kicking and screaming to make me ingest, knowingly ingest um, anything of animal origin. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty much the same now. It's like, um, I feel horrific when I've made a mistake. And the last one I made was about four, no, maybe five years ago. I had a, a no moo milkshake from Holland and Barrett and it had honey in it. Oh, no. And I didn't realise until I was, I was like, this is really sweet. What have they done mm. with this? And there it was, honey. Uh, yeah, because you have I to be checked. careful. Yeah. I mean, especially with veganism getting so popular now, uh, a lot of packaging is like trying to sort of lean in that direction. Oh, we have no dairy. And then like, it almost looks like it's vegan and then they'll sneak something in that's not. Yeah, I always check for the, for the vegan. <laughs> uh, Burger King have just been done, you know, for, um, for their advertising on Facebook of what they were calling their plant-based burger. And some of the ads said suitable for vegetarians and vegans and it was suitable for neither oh no because it's yeah, fried it's fried on the same thing as the as the meat mm. so mm. well we could all go down a whole new route about vegan ca capitalism paul but i don't think we've got time for that but i don't think vegan capitalism will save us um people yeah we need to move away from thinking that big corporations have our interests at heart, it's all about money, unfortunately. But that's another thread. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think maybe maybe the the scary thought in that is that people might think because I know I do sometimes, and I have to make it clear I'm, I haven't had a KFC, mm -hmm. I haven't had a Burger King, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have the meatball sub. Um, but we did uh, run out and get um, both the Greg Steak Bake, um, you find that in our Taste Test playlist. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen your videos, my dear. <laughs> and um, uh, the Pound Bakery Steak Bake mm -hmm. as well. So then I think people think, well, hang on, if I'm supposed to, if I'm <sighs> supposed to frown upon these, this clear branch of capitalism, trying to bring me into the fold where do i draw the line yeah yeah i mean it's hard it's hard because it's you know it's it's part of life it's so ingrained in our society it's hard to avoid you can't avoid capitalism but i think maybe there's levels of it. i mean i boycotted mcdonald's when i was 15 years old and i was still mm. eating meat and i boycotted them because they're an absolutely corrupt horrible company and it's not just from a uh, purely vegan I don't want to eat animals perspective it was all the other unethical stuff that they did and i just so i've avoided, i've not been in since i was 15 years old so i think because you're making an ethical choice to be vegan it, it's also worth considering that there are other ethics as well involved and there are companies that are a lot worse than others like you know unilever i've, I've boycotted unilever when i was a teenager as well um like Greg's, you know, like I see no harm in going to Greg's, but someone might disagree with me. And the CEO's gone vegan, hasn't he? So, you know. Has he? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. well. The CEO of Greg's went vegan and, and he wants to introduce a load more vegan stuff. Oh, brilliant. See, that's great, though, isn't it? So there's levels to everything, and everyone has their own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of um, line. Everyone has their they? line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Right, uh, Lauren, um, do you have any, uh, any things that you would like to say or add um, before we bring our conversation to a close? Because we've been chatting for like five minutes now. Oh, crikey. <laughs> no, no, I know that we could carry on for ages and ages and ages, but people will be like, I'm not watching a two-hour video. That bloody woman going about bloody magic. <laughs> Um, yeah, what would I say? Well, I mean, I think it's already been said in your other two videos, so I'll, I will echo, um, do your research, definitely. Um, but I would also say, take, take veganism seriously, but don't take yourself seriously. 
you know because i think that's where a lot of arguments come from it people take it so seriously mm -hmm. and when somebody says something and they get really offended and then an argument starts it's like it's okay if someone wants to take the piss out of you let them take the piss out of you it doesn't matter if you've got your self-belief in what you're doing and you're happy and you're thriving it doesn't matter what anybody else says so know know yourself basically know what you're doing why you're doing it be informed be you know don't go into it blindly because you will get asked lots of questions um there'll be people in your life that don't agree with you but so what <laughs> so what yeah, you know and I... don't overthink it it's not as hard as you think think of your favorite meal you can veganize it easy so don't think you have to right. like, like eat keep quick quinoa gravel with a nasturtium foam every night you don't have to you can eat pizzas and burgers and whatever sausages and sausage rolls and pizzas sausage and rolls, shepherd's yeah. pie and burgers and yeah on and on i think that's the thing when you say vegan everyone thinks oh the all oh, this mad stuff like remember when i went vegan my mum said what do you eat and i said i eat food mother <laughs> you know it's not being down from mars it's food <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> crazy isn't it crazy i actually uh, i made a shepherd's pie the other night with um a packet of that vegetarian butcher plant mints oh i've never had that yeah it was okay it doesn't keep its shape very well but with all the grated carrot and grated onion that i put in with it and the um bisto best onion gravy powder uh it made quite a nice bottom uh, and then the mash on top, and I took it, I, I did a portion for my mum mm -hmm. with a lot of um, shredded, um, what's the cabbage called? Savoy cabbage, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. how we had it the night before. Um, I, I've got this system with my mum now, like I take something in, put it in the kitchen, stand a good six feet away from her. Are you okay, mum? Do you need anything? No, she's fine. Took her this meal down, went to collect the plate the next day. She said, that was the best thing I've eaten in two weeks. Yeah. So it's I was like, oh, fine. I said, well, look, I'm going to be making more of stuff like that now. Um, so I'll make sure you've always got a meal. And um, she's gone, just gone through a packet of Richmond vegan sausages. Oh, do you know, they're fit. I've not tried them yet. I've not found them anywhere. She can't <laughs> leave the vegan. <laughs> she cannot believe they're vegan and she loves them she's had them deep fried and oven baked she said she prefers them oven baked but i think that might be because she had chips with them <laughs> <laughs> and also i'd like to add don't believe these anti-vegans on youtube don't believe a word that they say they're full of it look at my horrible vegan teeth look at them falling out <laughs> I think sometimes you just have to laugh at things and not take everything so seriously. Uh, yeah, and I think people ascribe things to sh to stupid things as well. It's yeah. like, if there's a vegan who has dental issues, I have dental issues. Mm -hmm. I've had dental issues for years. Should have seen my mum and dad. And that's where <laughs> I got it from. My dad... Do you like a graveyard? <laughs> my dad had a massive gap in his teeth and really protruding because he was a clencher yes yeah. clencher but they both lost all of their teeth by 40 right so you know i've got most of mine and i'm 50 so i'm doing all right <laughs> yeah yeah no it's like you say they like they like grasp for anything like oh yeah. someone you've got a spot so it's because you're vegan well no it's because i've got hormones you know, like I saw someone getting berated, some teenage girl getting berated because she's got spots and she's a vegan. And it's like, no, she's got spots because she's a bloody teenager. And teenagers get spots, man. <laughs> I, I've had um, I've had a few uh, comments recently about how pale I look. Oh, God. Lockdown. We live in England. You live in England. <laughs> I live in England. I'm not even going on a bike ride at the moment. I'm spending like 10 <laughs> minutes in the garden. So thanks. It's not He's still in Italy, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I've got Irish blood, Jesus, I'm, I'm bloody see-through. <laughs> right, closing comments, Miss Lauren. Um, well, I suppose just like, like I said, don't take everything so seriously, have a laugh. Um, 
and 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 know that what you're doing is a wonderful thing and eventually everyone's going to come around to our way of thinking <laughs> we're just ahead of the curve that's all i would hope so <laughs> right everybody please go and check uh, lauren will be here you're you, you're here lauren yes yes <laughs> um uh, do check out lauren's channel which is linked and uh uh, yeah, check out her story, check out her gardening, check out her beautiful surroundings. And uh, thank you so much, Lauren, for being part of our series. And of course, thank you for being one of our moderators. Uh, oh, um, yeah, no problem. For as long as you have been, you've been around like... I was there before you were at 500. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. when we had about 350 subscribers. Yeah. E yeah. bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bye, love. I shall say to everyone, be excellent to yourselves and each other. And give my love to Mr. Jason as well. I will, and give my love to Ian. And yes. uh, I, I look forward to more of your gardening videos. <laughs> okay. Cheers, Lauren. Bye bye. Bye, my darling. Now I've got to stop this damn thing. <laughs> you stop it. <laughs>